one grazing here out in the bee yard it is a warm wednesday evening it is around 83 fahrenheit i'd say that'd be about 40 celsius but i wanted to pop in say hey to everybody and also i wanted to talk about queens in general for a second now of course we all know i'm gonna be doing some queen rearing we have our queen rearing things on the way we have some a lot of the things now we just got to get the bee yard ready and we have we're going to get some more we're going to upgrade and we're going to also expand the bee yard to some new more bees of course we need more bees because i have five hives that probably can support me a little bit but i'm gonna get a few more so then i can do even more operations and raise even more queens but this is the first go round, so we're gonna see how it goes. But up aside, starter alone, finisher alone, all the meth different methods for queen rearing. You know, there's this one big question that I see a lot is that which honeybee queen genetic is the best, or which one would be the top picks. So well, I'm gonna go ahead and go through everything that I've found to work for me, and a few that you the top picks that I hear all the time and we'll go ahead and do that. So first thing, first genetic queen honeybee genetic would be the Italian. Now I have two Italians, a few, one, two of them are, one of them died. They, you know, they, they're just so small. I probably didn't do anything right with them. There's another one over here behind all this stuff of the equipment. There's some, there's another little small nuke. It's doing okay. I don't know if it's gonna make it or not. But then I have another one, remember y'all? The one with the blue hive and uh, I put a deep on it. They're already starting to go up there and draw stuff out. But that hive is doing great. Um, I like that, that genetic from that hive. They have that good trait in them. So that's the hive I'm going to graft from. As we all know, that I'm going to be doing queen rearing. That's the one over there. Is I'm gonna, the one I'm going to be grafting out of. It's a good hive. I really do like it. It's been doing giving me some good good personalities and fruit so that's the one i'm gonna graft out of i really like the traits i did have to feed i did have to treat but overall if i as long i fed all year all winter long keeping them brooding up so whenever you keep brooding them up therefore they in the spring they turn out with good numbers so italian is one of the best picks next one is the russians i have there's the russians They've gotten through about three years, or let's say two years, without feed or treatments, which is cool. I did feed this year round, but I didn't, I didn't feed much. Just, I, you know what I did? I got a sugar block or a sugar brick or a sugar bag, is what I like to call it, and pour some water in there, mix it up, just set it in there, and if they need it, they go up there. It's like the mountain camp method, right? So, Russian... Italian. Now, what are some other offsiders that you have? You have ankle biters that they they bite. Of course, they'll bite the ankles of the bees, but not intentionally. They just bite off the mites, which you know so they try to kill them. You know that that's what they're called, ankle biters. And then we're recently seeing a VSH queen bee trait coming up. Now, if you don't know what VSH means, it stands for varroa sensitive hygiene. Before VSH was called VSH, it was called SMR, suppressed mite reduction. So why, so at first when they did the study in the lab, B lab, what they did was they first called it SMR, suppressed mite reduction, if I'm correct. I think it was that, it was SMR. So then after a few more studies after that, then they got to the point where they said, we're not gonna call this SMR. It changed it and then they did it for us, sensitive hygiene, so you know. Uh, it just kind of stimulated from SMR to VSH, varroa hygiene. Suppressed mite reduction to varroa hygiene. So, just a little background footage.
Never fang when looking into VSH tray or any traits, however. If you have a VSH queen and put it in a susceptible colony, say we have an Italian that is susceptible to mites or whatever, right? So take the susceptible queen out, do whatever you want to with her. You could put her in another have that doesn't have a queen, sell her, do whatever you want. And then you put that VSH queen in your Italian, and then see, it should work and then your mite, mite count should go down. But if you flip that, put if you put a susceptible Italian queen, that's just a standard queen that does not have the VSH in it, and put them in a in a VSH colony, because say you had a queen, a VSH queen, but she died, then you bought another queen that's just Italian that doesn't have VSH in her, put her in the put her in the VSH colony, then your mite count will start increasing. That's theory, and I think it's true. Like anything, you gotta keep that queen laying eggs. But if you put a new queen in there that does not have a trait in her, your mite, it's, she's not gonna carry the same eggs. It's slowly, the VSH is, is slowly gonna go down to the point where you just have standard Italian traits in your halves. So I thought I'd pop in here and talk a little about that. So that's one good thing I really like about raising queens is that what you can do is if you like, if you have a trait that you like, you go to that trait, graft your larvae, put it in a never have, you know, to start your cell. So graft out the one that you like. So say I like my Italian over there, the blue one. So I'll graft out there and that will be my have. Ah, that's the queen. I'll be raising daughters. Or I'll be raising daughters off of that queen. So that's pretty cool. And I think a lot of new, newer beekeepers and other beekeepers in general are probably going to start queen rearing, queen rearing this year. So it's going to be fun. And I hope to take you along with the journey. So y'all take care. We'll catch you on the next video.